Hey everybody, this is Phil Flint, just welcoming you back to uh, number two in our Let's Learn Together on SCCM, uh, the edition available in 2016. Today we're going to be talking about the prerequisites that uh, you need in place to be able to install SCCM and we'll be doing a chunk of demos. So what we'll be running through is we need to change the business process, what we need to do is SQL, Active Directory, SCCM and Firewalls. Let's take those in order. So the first item to discuss is business process and when we installed SCCM the reason we're installing it is generally speaking to take people from a basic IT infrastructure where they go and install things by hand and manage their estate by hand and take them through a standardized rationalized dynamic infrastructure where IT ends up as a strategic asset where it helps run the business things are fully automated Operating systems can be deployed, applications can be added or removed, users can self-service, you can secure things down, you know what you've got running where. So in terms of changing your business process, you'll need to think about things like who sets up accounts, who authorizes it, who authorizes software deployments, who's allowed to um, deploy software, who does the deployment of operating systems, who rebuilds machines, what is the life cycle for hardware, what do you do for reporting and tracking, um, license management, how do you go about issuing operating system updates, do you use test groups, change controls, do you need to put change control in place, all these things. So not going to cover that off in this technical training, but do keep in mind that you need to think about the changes to business process. What we will talk about next is SQL. These are the um, supported versions of SQL that you need to be running one of these off to be able to install SCCM. On your secondary site you can run Express, but for your primary site or central admin site you do need a full copy of SQL. Generally speaking, you need to install SQL reporting services as well if you want to be able to run the reports. SQL, go out and buy it separately. If you buy a system center with SQL technologies, you get to install SQL standard, um, as many instances as you like to run your production. SQL for system center, as long as there's nothing running on it but system center. What it doesn't give you the right to do is run reporting services, unfortunately. So if you do run reporting services, you'll still need to buy SQL and license people to connect to reporting services. So those are the versions of SQL that you need to run. When you install SQL, um, it uses a non-default collation. So you can't just bang it on with anything else either. Uh, you need to specifically select this collation. The exceptions only exist for China because of their different character set. But other than that, you need to be using this collation when you install SQL. Other things about the SQL configuration, the SCCM site server account must have admin access on the SQL server to be able to um, create the database. Windows authentication should be used, not SQL authentication. SQL should be correctly configured for everything. So for example, RAM should be set to 90% on standalone servers. And depending on what you have installed on the shared server, anywhere between 50 and 80% of RAM should be shared. And the site database needs the common lung common language runtime to be enabled, but you don't need to worry about that too much. That will be done automatically when the site database is installed. In terms of the service accounts that you use, standard service accounts, but if they're local accounts, then you are, need to ignore the typo on the screen. They should have the correct uh, service principal names, the correct SPNs configured. So there on the screen is the commands you need to run to do that. So let's go and have a look at SQL. Um, changing those settings, what we do in SQL, and setting up the SPNs for the service accounts. So here we are on the domain controller. You can see that I have my security group here. And because I have my security group there, I can now simply add in the site computer to that group. And then that site computer will get the sysadmin role within SQL. So a nice, simple way to do it. In terms of the SPNs, then if we start up command prompt or PowerShell, um, I have it set to PowerShell on server 2016. 
new, new feature that you can do to set it by default to show power show on the uh, start menu. Then if we do set SPN minus L for our service account, it should be SVC underscore SQL DB. Then you can see that I have no service principal names registered. So if I do a set SPN minus A, for the MS SQL service for our SQL computer name, which just double checking should be SQL SCCM01. SQL SCCM01. That's fine. And got the slash the right way on port 1433 and grant that to my service account which is service underscore sql db so that's going to register that so if i check the spns for that service account now you'll see that i have that service principal name registered i need to repeat that then as well for the fully qualified domain name in case anything wants to connect using Kerberos by way of the fully qualified domain name. And it's for the Kerberos authentication that we're setting up these service principal names. So I now have both of those registered. So when I restart the service accounts, restart the servers, everything will kick in. So we should now be um, good to go. So let's go back to the presentation. We've got our SQL prerequisites in place. So the next thing we want to talk about are our Active Directory prerequisites. So Active Directory, just a few things to quickly run through. Your Active Directory domain level, it can be between 2008 and 2012 R2. It's important to run it with 2016 domain controllers, but the domain level at the moment, October 2016, is not documented as being supported for 2016 domain level. So. If you are running your domain level at 2016, you can give it a try, or my advice is to check whether it's supported first or not. Why is AD important to us for a CCM? Well, our AD integrated clients can query AD for things such as finding which site they should be assigned to and which ports they should use to connect to the site servers. To fully enable AD integration, to fully enable our clients to use AD to find our site servers four actions we need to do we need to extend the schema to make sure that all of the objects are there we need to create a container which is a little bit like an ou and we need to set the security permissions on that container so that the site servers can add themselves and change themselves while they're in that container and finally when we have sccm installed we need to enable ad publishing within sccm so I can't show you the fourth step within this part of the, of the training because we don't have SCCM installed yet, but we'll show you that later on once SCCM is up and running. What devices can't use AD then? So I said Active, active Directory integrated devices, and of course, if, if you've got devices that are connecting by way of the Exchange Service Connector, they're not going to be able to talk to AD necessarily. Mac computers, Linux computers, mobile devices, Windows integrated clients that are configured just for internet only client management or internal clients that are on the internet that don't have access to AD. So bottom line is if you can't connect to AD, you can't use AD for querying things. So you have to use things like DNS to um, inform the clients of where to go to, to connect to SCCM or simply configure the client when you install it. Uh, by far the easiest way though is for Active Directory, especially if you've got thousands of internal endpoints. If you've already extended AD, if you already have SCCM installed, and you've extended it for 2007 or 2012, you don't need to do it again. So let's um, pop back to the lab again and run you through setting up the, um, extending the schema for AD and of course setting up the container and changing the permission. Okay, so here we are back in the lab and we're on the domain controller. So to extend the schema, we need an account that's a member of the schema admins group. So I'm using the domain admin account. We've got to be logged into the schema master domain controller. So if we open up um, Active Directory schema and look at the operations master, you can see that 
which server you should be on. And so I am sitting on that server. We can then run the extend Active Directory Exchange tool. Now that should be on our um, D drive sitting here because I have the CD connected. So if I change that through to um, the SMS setup directory, bin the x64 directory, then in that folder, we sh should have, uh, if I type in the correct command, uh, extend AD schema tool, ext AD schema. So what's also in there is um, an LDF file. So if I do a uh, of config manager underscore ad, then hmm, you just know it that you can't find it. Um, Oh, it's because I can't type config manager underscore ad type as underscore ad underscore schema file then you can use that LDF file and edit it so it uses your domain and extend your schema using that so uh, that's useful if you need uh, um, someone if you're working an organization where you don't have access to ad then you can send your domain admin the LDF file and they can extend the schema for you so if we just run the extend AD schema tool. Then we have extended the schema. So that, that's the first step in what we need to do. What we then need to do is create a new container and apply the permissions to the container. So we'll be doing that now to create the container we can need to go into our um, ADSI edit so let's start that up now so I've started ADSI edit we right click and connect to the default naming context and if we drill down into there you can see it basically looks a bit like Active Directory Go to the system container and underneath the system container, create a new object. That will be a container itself. And we will call that container system management. Click on next, click on finish. That gives us our new container. And then we need to right click that properties, security, add our site server into there, which is a computer click on OK, give it full control and apply. That will give our site server access, admin rights, full control rights, just at the system management container level, this object only. So we edit that, make it apply to all descendant objects. And there we go, we've got a new system management container configured with the correct right. If we go into uh, Active Directory itself, then we can see that we now have a system management container sitting there. So let's go back to the slides and see what we need to do next. So what we've done so far is we've had to think about our business processes, what we're going to do with those. We've installed SQL and configured SQL so that the SCCM server has administrative rights to it and we've made sure it's running the correct location, collation, correct collation, made sure that our service accounts have the right service principal names. We've checked our AD functional level to make sure it's 2012 R2 or below. 2008 through to 2012 R2 and we've created a container and granted permissions to that container which we've also extended our schema. So what we need to do next is think about the SCCM prerequisites, the prerequisites that need to be on the SCCM server. So we use a tool called the setup downloader, setupdl.exe. It has a command line so you can run it 
from the command line or you can run it interactively and that will go away and it will download the redistributed files of language packs and other product updates that sccm is going to need to do itself uh, after we've got that we can run the prereq check.exe um, that's run every time that you install a site server role to check that the server is fit and capable to run SCCM, but we can run it separately just to check that everything's okay. So let's go back to the lab and carry out those two exercises. And here we are back in the lab. So I'm on my SCCM server. It has nothing installed except the operating system. So if we um, go to a command prompt, we can change drives to our DVD drive. Um, and within there, we can change directories to our um, SMS setup directory. And within our setup directory, we should find setupdl.exe, which we can go and run. And it says, where do you want to download these app files to? So I've made a folder on a E drive here called prerequisites. So I'm going to download those to there. So we'll leave that running and it's got 54 files to go. So those are going to come up to quite a few gigs of data. So I'll come back to you um, when this is finished downloading. And there you go, it's all downloaded. So um, if we were to have a look at my data drive, prerequisites folder, then it's downloaded 770 meg of files for things it needs to download. So language packs, etc. .NET 4.5, SQL Express, Silverlight, Windows Update, things like that. So um, that's it. Let's go back to our slides. And the last bit to talk about then as far as there are a number of firewall ports that need to be open in various places on the various servers. Typically it comes down to 80 and 443, but there are quite a number of others. Best thing you can do is uh, go to this page on TechNet and read what those ports are. Just like to say thank you for joining me for part two of this Let's Learn Together on SCCM. I've been Phil Flint. I'll see you in our next episode. Bye.